I know. <laughs> Hi, I'm A.R. Taylor, and I'm going to read a story today called The Flower of His Importance, which was published in Rosebud Magazine, Volume 42. There were two reasons to hate his house, his gardener and his neighbor, but he wasn't sure which man should be at the top of the list. As Vince looked out over his opulent domain, a half-acre green lawn in Los Feliz, red and yellow ranunculus flowers beneath beds of hydrangeas, their sexy bulbs coppery pink in the twilight, he experienced this grand garden as the flower of his importance in the world. Still, he assumed, because of his past, that the snake twisted not far from him, working ever so continuously under and around all that he had created. They weren't trees exactly, those salvia mine nuts, but they had grown to become as tall as trees. And they weren't his either. They just looked like his. That was because their owner, his neighbor, refused to cut them or trim them or do anything whatsoever to halt their exuberant progress over his fence. His wife didn't care. That was the pisser. 25 years younger than himself, she was French. And he remembered well the campaign of personal seduction he had launched to get her. She certainly wasn't concerned about the neighbor's trees and had even managed a giggle when he launched into a diatribe about them. You don't own the view, Vince. It can't be done. At dinner, she offered to help him, though, with the problem. I am reading this new book on the power of positive thinking, but in the Buddhist way. I'll try that. Vince took a sip of the excellent Cabernet he'd just brought up from the wine cellar. You do that visualize something. God, the thing about Los Angeles, sooner or later everyone went mad. Nobody liked their neighbor, a short man with an Italian sounding name who also had no visible means of support and no wife. He never appeared to work, only lounged in his backyard pool at all hours of the day, hidden by the salvias naturally. But Vince had a military had military-style Fuji binoculars and took every chance to watch him. He had black curly hair and sweated a lot, at least he had when Vince finally confronted him a week later while he was standing by his white sports car. If you could just thin them, that might help. Vince was trying to be diplomatic, even while towering over the little man. The trouble is you can't really do that and you can't cut them off the top either because then they'd just be jagged green spouts. His neighbor chuckled. You know, you can roll up the leaves and smoke them. Haven't you seen the sign on the Venice boardwalk? Purple, sticky salvia. He put two fingers to his nose and tapped. Some high. Late the next afternoon, Vince came home early from work to speak to the gardener, who shifted from side to side, very uneasy at this conversation, since one rule of gardening is that you can't cut down another man's trees. I'm sorry, Mr. Vincent, it's not possible. They can't be thinned and he'll notice. He was a very handsome man, this Jorge, middle 40s maybe, but tanned with a thick head of black hair. He was holding a rake and a blower. At dinner that night, he noticed that Emily, looked, his wife, looked particularly blooming. Her skin rosy from what? Exercise? Happiness? She wore a green skirt and a tight t-shirt. So chic, so how could he put it to himself together? She looked a little sexed up too, that was it, as she did when they had first married. She took a, a sip of her wine and Vince watched her smile. Jesus Christ, Jesus H. Christ. He knew that smile. He knew it from their courtship days. That sly little smile, that French knowingness in the biblical sense. How had it come to this? She was screwing the gardener. That had to be it. The next day, Vince delayed his trip into work. It was 10.30 in the morning, his son off to school, his wife to exercise. He went outside and strode down to the offending salvias, higher even than he had realized, and he tried to rip off one of the purple flowers or stems or whatever the hell they were called, but no luck. Lightheaded and too hot in his sweatshirt, Vince grabbed a big pair of hedge clippers. He raced down to the row of salvias and began to shear them off one by one. Not easy at all because of the thick stalks. At 
after some panic and a lot of cursing, at last he had something that resembled a flat top, and all that was left were the spiky fronds below where the flowers had been. It was hard work, he was sweating, but he managed to get a very clean, squared off effect. For reasons that weren't entirely clear, Vince decided to go home early that night at 5, when normally he never returned before 8.30. His son didn't show up until 6.30 or 7 from his various sports outings, and the French liked to eat late, so this was their familial pattern. But this evening he was in a state of nervous agitation. Did they prosecute people for hedge cutting? Could the neighbor prove he had done it? Maybe he should go out to the storage shed and bury the clippers. As it stood now, the gardener would figure it all out, but would never openly oppose him. But maybe Jorge wanted his wife for himself. They would run off together to East LA and drive around in low riders eating tacos. Decorum between Vince and his wife was such that he always knocked on their bedroom door when he surmised she was in there. He tapped, then shoved, and waited for a moment once inside the door, unable to see her anywhere. The bed was lumpy and unmade. He peered more closely at the mounds made by heaping pillows. In amongst them, his sleek French wife lay naked, a leg sliding over the duvet, her hair down and flowing, but suddenly she rose up from the mess. Beneath her was another body, because a manly arm curled around his wife's leg. Oh, if only he'd had a gun was all he could think. But then he saw to his stupefaction a round, dark head of hair pop up beside her. No, it was not the muscled gardener, no mere stripling, no stranger at all, but the short, pudgy neighbor, very sweaty now, the owner of the obstreperous salvias. Jesus, Vince thought he'd have a heart attack as the blood pounded to his forehead, and he feared for a moment that he would fall down. He wanted to fall down. Instead, he shouted, I've cut your goddamn trees down. They're gone, dead. The plump little man rolled Emily off him and laughed.